Conversations with a Citizen. I'm your host, Tia Carol Jones. I'm here today with Dahlia Goree. Dahlia is running for 21st Ward Alderman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, so I grew up on the west side of Chicago uh, with my parents. Um, I have uh, three sisters. I'm married. I have a wonderful husband, Devin Keys. And I have uh, two children and a grandbaby. So I am a grandmama now. Okay. Our baby is uh, two months. Her name is Jamila. Oh, Congratulations. So I was just down there for Christmas break in uh, Houston, Texas. And I did not want to come back. <laughs> and I guess God was like, okay, I'm going to grant you that. So they canceled my flight. Oh, so, I had, so I had two days to stay down here and be with the grandbaby and just spoil on her. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Why did you decide to run for 21st Word Alderman? So it wasn't like I wanted to become an alderman. Okay. Um, just like I didn't want to become a police. Okay. Um, people were like, you know what? You do a lot of stuff in the community. Um, you're great. You know how to talk to people. You know how to move around. You know how to work and get people things that they need done. And so it's like, I think you should think about that. And I was like, no, nah, I, I, I just, I don't think that I would be good as an alderman. And they said, well, what's, what is an alderman? It's what you do. And so I prayed about it, kept praying about it. Then I left the thought alone, and then it popped up one day like, yeah, you can be one. Mm -hmm. And so, you know how you fight things and God always puts stuff back in your face? <laughs> and that's what happened. I started fighting it, and every time I say, no, he puts somebody in my face and say, hey, you know what? I'll support you if you do it. And that's what happened. I just went out on faith, you know, and like, hey, the regular people in the community, like myself, uh, just like, hey, let's do it. And so that's what I did. Went out there on faith. How would you describe the 21st Ward? The 21st Ward, how would I describe that? Um, we need businesses back in our community. Okay. Um, we have... Uh, 83rd Street, and thanks to um, Alderman Brookins for bringing that big commercial uh, real estate out there for the community. But I want to build on that. I want to keep it sustainable. So we got to find a way to keep these businesses flowing in our community. And then we have um, 119th Street. Um, we have the big commercial buildings over there where we have retail. We lost Target, but we gained Blue Cross Blue Shield which is great for our community. So I want to be able to also sustain that and bring more businesses into that uh, community. So when we bring those businesses in our community, then guess what? We're spending our money back into our community. Um, we want to be able to clean up the 21st Ward. When I go knocking on the doors, talking to citizens, they're like, you know what? The trash is, is terrible. You know, we need city services done. So I want to sit down and talk to the department heads and say, hey, what can we do to get these services done? But I also feel like, you know, when I speak with the community, that we got to work together. You know, it's like you're cleaning up your own home. Let's clean up our neighborhood. Let's get together as a community and bring back that pride that was once in the 21st Ward. We want to bring that back strong. And when you clean up your neighborhood, you feel confident when you drive through. And not only that, other people will see it. They say, you know what? I want to bring my business to this community. And then it flows into with public safety. So when the community sees that we're cleaning up our neighborhood and we're keeping it on the, on the straight and level, then they're going to want to think twice about trying to come in our neighborhood with the riffraff because we're going to work together as a community. So that's what I think about the 21st Ward. Okay. And what ways has your 24 year career as a Chicago police officer prepared you for elected office? Dealing with the community, okay. uh, going into homes, seeing how, you know, you may go on one block and this family may have nothing. And then you go two blocks over and this family has everything. And so just going in those homes and seeing the needs, like there are different needs, like that home that has everything, they may have domestic violence. But in that home that doesn't have everything, they got love. They just don't have the financial to take care of their home. So every home 
in the ward that I've worked in, the 21st ward, it, it all, everybody needs something. It's just different levels. So I want to be able to base that off of what I've experienced and becoming the alderman of the 21st ward. I, I, I love what I do. I, I love working for the community. I love doing the programs for the youth, creating programs. I have a non for profit that I do. So I help, uh, I did food giveaways for during COVID. I did it twice. I did, uh, I rented a U-Haul truck and I did uh, 600 boxes of food. It was gone within two hours. And uh, that was on 123rd in Halston. And then I did a, a food giveaway on 115th in Halston. I did like two or 300 boxes and those were gone like really quick. So there's a need in our community. So that's where it goes back to bringing businesses in our community so that people can have jobs and so that we can spend our money in our community and it'll go right back into our community. And that's what the police department has taught me from working in the community policing aspect, whereas we're bridging the gap with the community and talking to the community. And with me working in the schools with the children and their parents and hearing their stories of what's happening at home or what happened on the street. Those are the things that have helped me to become the next first black female for the 21st Ward. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so you've conducted a listening tour of the 21st Ward. How did that, how did what you heard from the constituents shape uh, your campaign platform? So what shaped my campaign platform uh, for the listening tour was just listening to how they love their community, how they were seeing how the 34th Ward and the 24th Ward were a long time ago, and now it's going to be combined together. How they were seeing that they had a plethora of, uh, of businesses in the neighborhood. Like you can go down 87th Street and there were a bunch of businesses. You can go out and go to the park and not worried about getting robbed and how it was so many activities in the park and they just let their kids go walking up and down the street and everybody knew everybody on the block, which goes to the block clubs. You know, you had parties on the block clubs. They were telling me how they would go, everybody would go to the store and grab items and they would come back together and bring them together and everybody would have their music out and the kids would play and they knew the neighbors. So if they were at work, their next door neighbor like Miss Jones would see, you know, Felicia out there doing something wrong and Miss Jones would be like, Felicia, okay now, I'm gonna tell your mama. Right. So those are the things that I grew up on. And so I can relate to them when they were saying it because it was putting me back in time when I was growing up mm -hmm. in the block club parties and we would have the dance routines and our parents would be out there talking to each other and our, the mothers would be in one section and the fathers would be in one section and the kids would be out there in the middle of the street dancing. The dads would be barbecuing and, you know, they'd be telling these tales like, yeah, man, I cooked these ribs real good. And, you know, they had a little competition. So those are the things that I love and, and definitely want to see happen back in our community. Okay, and you brought up a, a good point that because of the redistricting, now the 21st Ward is different. Can you give me the boundaries of the Ward now? Sure, so the boundaries of the 21st Ward is from 122nd in Princeton to 100 to Halsted, and it goes all the way down to 83rd. So it's the 200 block of 83rd to the 800 block of 83rd, it goes to Ashland, and Ashland all the way to 83rd and Ashland all the way to um, 119th and Vincennes. So it goes into Ashland, Beverly, and then Vincennes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Um, what qualities do you possess that you think would make you an effective alderman? Okay. The qualities that would make me an effective alderman? That would be, um, I'm a people person, you know, and I, I love to listen to people and what they have going on. Um, if you tell me that you have an issue, if I can't help you, I'm going to get somebody to help you. Um, my effectiveness, like I said, going back to uh, working as a police officer and having my own non-for-profit helping people in the community, um, I know how to get out there and get the resources for the people. And I can't tell you what I'm going to do 
when I get in the office, I could just tell you that I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing in the community, which is what I've been doing, helping young ladies and young men. I created a um, father-daughter dance with the police department through my not-for-profit. And what it was is that we had young ladies um, come in, they dressed up, and we had, if they didn't have a brother or a father or an uncle to take them on that um, father and daughter dance, then we provided a police officer for them. And that, you know, gives that young lady a sense of belonging, like, hey, I can dress up, this is what I do. And then they get to see how you're supposed to be treated when you grow up, you know, being escorted in, being treated like a princess. And, you know, just creating radio programs. So I created a radio program at um, Kennedy King College, and that was when Harold Lee Rush was alive. And it was phenomenal. We had young men that were out on the street that were gangbangers. And they came into this program four days out of the week, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. And what it was, we instilled in them how to talk, um, how to dress appropriately when you're walking up and down the street. Um, we had them to create their own their own talking points to go on the radio. So, and we had them to stand up on Monday and talk about it. So, come Tuesday, they would go on the radio. And it, it was it was phenomenal because we like, you don't just have to be on the radio. You can be the background person. You can be the producer. You know, you can be the one that's back there helping with getting the sound together and just finding people to come talk to on the radio. So it's more than just getting on the radio talking because everybody is not a radio person. But those qualities are reaching out to the community because our youth and our seniors, they want to feel wanted. And so that's important. And so that's why I feel like I would be a great alderman because I know how to reach into the community and I know how to talk to the community. And I'm not afraid to walk the streets. Like when I'm out campaigning, I have no problem going out there by myself and I get chewed out all the time. Like you have to wait on us. I said, but this is not your race. This is my race. So if this is something that I want, I got to go out there and work for it. We can't wait on you all. And so I'm the police. I ride out in the squad car by myself. So why can't I, why can't I walk the street? Why should I be afraid to walk by myself in the neighborhood that I'm trying to be the alderman in? I think that's, that's asinine. I need to walk so that they see me, that they can touch me. And that's the importance of wanting to run to be an alderman is that people want to see you. They don't want to call and be like, okay, he or she is not available and keep calling. No, I am available. I am here. And that is, that is what I have done, have done as a person, as a police officer. When I drive, I get out the car, I walk the beat, I talk to people, I play basketball with the kids in uniform because you know I used to be a basketball player back in high school okay. and college, yeah. so it's yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if these knees will go that far anymore, but yeah, but those are the things and the qualities that I possess that I can say I've been there, I've done that, I love it, you know, and regardless of the fact, I'm going to keep doing it till I'm dead and gone, <laughs> you know, I hate to say it like that, but this is what my grandparents instilled in me okay. and my father instilled that in me my father raised four girls okay. by himself and i'm the oldest so it's like i'm sister slash mama so when i tell my sister something they be like you're not my mama but the first thing something goes wrong they're calling me like hey what 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 so yeah so it, it's it's a blessing you know and everybody doesn't have that calling but that's what separates me from the rest of the candidates is that i'm out here i'm working and I'm making a difference, and it's proven facts that I'm out here doing my work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about your nonprofit? So my nonprofit, um, I created it maybe like maybe four years ago, but I have been doing the work way longer than the nonprofit was open. Okay. And my nonprofit basically like helps everybody. Um, I help the seniors. Um, if they have problems, you know, with doing their rent, or if they have problems with their medication and trying to pay their rent. Then I refer them to different agencies that I've worked with because I used to be a senior service officer. Okay. And uh, um, so what I do is I refer them to different people. Like I specifically work with like uh, Jen Care a lot of times and um, with Carol Tucker. And she helps me if I have a senior that calls me because even though I'm not in that 
capacity of doing it anymore. I still have their children call me or they'll call me and say, hey, Officer Gloria, I'm having a problem with this. And I'll send out some resources to them to help them. And for the youth, I do, um, the, I do the Christmas events. So it was one time in my life, my son, I think was like five or six and I just got on the police department and I had purchased some property and I did not know that you weren't supposed to spend your whole check on all the bills and all the mortgage and all of that. And I did that. So I had like $40 left and it was Christmas coming up like within four days. So, you know, you look with your, with your dad, you basically, you can spend all your money all you want to, but this particular time, you know, like Patty, Patty LaVille say, I'm on my own, <laughs> I'm on my own. Okay. So I had to go to the dollar store and buy my son dollar store toys. Okay. And that right there hurt me so bad because I'm used to going to Toys R Us, buying all these expensive gifts because I don't have to worry about paying no bills because I'm at home with my angry dad because he because <laughs> I don't have a baby while I'm supposed to be in nursing school. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I bought those toys and it was like, you know what, God, you let me get my financial situation together. I'm going to make sure I help somebody. Mm -hmm. So every year I help somebody. But then I found out that every year it got bigger and bigger and bigger. So what I started doing was dressing up like Miss Calls, going to the homeless shelters in Eaglewood, um, and just bringing toys. And I would get my friends, and we would support, we would get a family. So we took care of the whole shelter, and then it went to food the next year, and then now it's gone to my church for the Apostolic and Morgan Park. So I do Winter Wonderland. So I dress up like Miss Calls. I got me a Mr. Claus, and I get all these toys. And we just tell people just come in and we let each kid get three toys. So some of them got bikes, some of them got scooters, those La La dolls, just they, they got everything. And, okay. and then they got to watch the movie Jingle Jangle because I'm a big kid. Okay. So I love watching Jingle Jangle. And so we've been playing that for the last, I think, two years, Jingle Jangle, because that's like my favorite card, favorite uh, Christmas thing. And we are uh, partnership with another organization and they did hot chocolate. Then I brought the Chicago Police Department in because not only are you coming to get Christmas gifts, but I'm going to help you get a job. Okay. So we brought the Chicago Police Department out to set up a table to recruit, to bring people on a job. And I think that that's important to have people that look like us come on this job. And that's why I want to bridge the gap with the community and the police because we know that there is a separation. A lot of times media plays a lot of negativity with the police department because there are a lot of police officers that do great work but they just don't get recognized and so me as an alderman being in that position on the police department I want to bring that out I want to let the Chicago land know that we have great officers we have officers that have I've helped them you know work with them to get beds for families because we know what it's like going inside those homes and so that's why I want to be a common alderman as well because Someone needs to speak up for the officers that do the great work. And there are a lot of them that I work with that have done great work. Just like in any field, there, there's just a good radio broadcaster and there's a bad radio broadcaster. There are some good officers and there are some bad officers. But my main goal is that I want to bridge the gap with the community and the police. And because I'm already there, I can talk to the commanders that I know in the 5th District. I went to the academy with Commander Pinaris. I worked with Commander Joyce in the 22nd Morgan Park District. So I have their support if I was to become alderman, that we can work together and bridge that gap in our community that is so well needed in our community. Yeah. Um, and that kind of goes into the next question. Why do you think it is important to bridge the gap between the police and the young people in the war, and how do you intend to do that? So, I intend to bridge the gap with the young people in the community, is with these programs. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people don't know that the police department has a peer jury program. That peer jury program helps youths that have been incarcerated. Instead of them going to jail or staying in the juvenile's attention, they get to come to their peers, mm -hmm. and they actually go into the actual courtroom. and. The, the peers actually make the fate for you. So if it's community service, then you do that. And you have a police officer there to help the kids and that youth that's on the, um, that's on the panel 
they help them to make the proper decisions. And now you're building a relationship. And those youth that are on that panel, now they have exposure to the police. And, and they don't wear a uniform. And, it, and it's a beautiful thing because I used to do that peer jury. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're talking to them, you're learning them, they're learning you. You know, I used to bring my son all the time. So he was involved as well. Because if I'm gonna have a if I'm gonna have exposure for other kids, I need you to be exposed as well. And they need to see that this is my son and that he's, you know, the same as you. He's no different. You know, everything that you're doing, he's doing too. You know. So I think that that's important. And then we have uh, the Chicago um, police and fire training. So that now, that application is now opening. So that's another way for the kids to bridge the gap with the community. So I want the 21st Ward, and even the outside of the 21st Ward, I want them to know that these programs exist and that these are how we bridge the gap with the kids in our community. We get them involved in these programs. They go to the academy, the training is free. They get an understanding of how the police work, what the police is supposed to do, and they're actually seeing recruits in the academy. They're actually seeing, when they go to the fire department side, they're actually seeing the fire department people going there and the recruits, and they're going through the same training that we went through. And so I want that to be a bridge and a gap in the community, as well as the organizations, because there are a lot of organizations in the 21st Ward, and I feel like our youth need to get involved and the police need to get involved in those organizations. And as a police officer still, I wanna make sure that we get our organizations involved with the police department. As aldermen, what would you do to ensure your ward receives resources and that the ward is included in the economic development opportunities that happen in the city? I will fight. <laughs> I will fight because the South and the West, we don't get that. We don't get the attention. We don't get the resources. I want to fight for the resources. I want to talk to the um, building and planning department to make sure that we have businesses in our community and the businesses that we do have. I want to make sure that they stay open because a lot of businesses, they don't get the resources. They don't get the help. And so I want to build a community, um, a community for our businesses, starting off with a commerce making sure that our commerce is together so that all of the businesses can come together and speak. And I used to do that as well as a police officer. I was over the business meetings. So I wanna make sure that that is something that we bring into the community. Yes. Where can people go to learn more about you and your campaign? So they can go on daliagori21.com and uh, I'll spell my name, D-A-L-I-A-H, Gory, G-O-R-E-E, -E, and it's all together, 21.com. And that's my uh, social media page. And I do have a uh, Twitter account. It's the same thing, Dahlia Gory 21. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like our audience to know? Yes. Um, I am a public servant. I am not a politician. I love what I do in the community. Um, I am the only one out of all the candidates that I can truly say that I have been doing community work for decades. And I have do been doing this outside of being a police officer. So if you want someone that's going to make a difference in your community, I am that person. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Remember to make plans to join us again next week for Conversations with the Citizen, the place where real news is.